Welcome back to Wedding Photography Behind the Scenes, part two. Now, if you missed that first one, I'll link it up here on the right, or you can find it down in the description. But today we're going to talk about how we took portraits at Matt and Blakely's apartment before we went to their ceremony in the basement of the courthouse in Chicago. Right after that, we took some family portraits, and I want to show you how it all went. All right, we are back at the Tesla. This is my Model 3. It's so amazing when you get opportunities like this on a wedding day where there's like no pressure at all. It's so laid back, you just have the couple. I'm blown away by what we were able to get just now. You can never get that look on Lake Michigan unless you're there for sunrise. And no one's willing to get up for sunrise to do that stuff. But these guys are freaking amazing and we got it. So now we're gonna go to their apartment and we're gonna go shoot some really interesting portraits, I think, because they said they just moved in. They have a bunch of boxes everywhere. All right. We didn't need to be to the courthouse until 9 a.m., so we took it easy, played their wedding playlist, and drank some coffee. I always love setting a scene when photographing a couple's home. It just adds so much context and nostalgia to the story to help them remember what their home and neighborhood looked like when they lived there. After some coffee talk and a voiceover from Blakely for the film, I took some portraits of them uh, near the window where there was a healthy amount of even natural light streaming through. I love taking individual portraits if there's enough time. There's something so classic and wonderful about each of them having a solo portrait of the other for the rest of their lives. Still had a bit of time, so they suggested we head up to the common area on their roof for a few more portraits. Super slow-mo kiss. Yeah, Matt, go ahead and uh, put your hand around her waist here. Yeah. So you're gonna start like, I don't know, five inches away from each other. Yep, and then just close your eyes and go in really slow, and then really slow away. Okay, ready, set, go. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna have you guys come on over here. Yep, this is just a little cool. The drop-off sucks, it's horrifying. Uh, it's awesome when you can work with like good architecture and framing and lines and stuff. Everything is so unique and original with these guys and that's always what I want for couples. I want them to experience it exactly how they want to experience it. We're about to bounce to the courthouse in an hour and a half and shoot their 10 minute ceremony. And then we're breaking for lunch and napping. <laughs> Blakely and Matt took an Uber while we hopped back in the Tesla. Traffic was brutal and we were actually pressed for time. Since that was the case, we rushed in and down to the basement to get them arriving and greeting their family. Which means Colin, my BTS cameraman, had to guard the Tesla from getting ticketed. It makes me so happy to see a couple make different and unique decisions for their wedding day, holding close to what's most important to them. And in this case, Blakely and Matt wanted things to be simple. They didn't care for the formality of a traditional ceremony, but rather wanted a unique experience together first and foremost, and a less traditional one with their closest people. Later that evening, they had an intimate dinner with 25 family members and friends, and a cocktail reception with a larger group the day after that. But we'll save that for part three of this series because I want to show you how your environment doesn't need to be stunning in order for you to get incredible photographs that will be cherished by your clients and their families for the rest of their lives. So instead of leaning into the architecture and the beauty of the scenery, I leaned into the beauty of the emotion in that tiny little room. And once that wonderful little ceremony was over, we headed out to take some of the least impressive yet most important photos on any wedding day the family photos. I try to find a spot with even light, simple backdrop, and a place for every face to fit in, taking my time to make sure everyone's looking and smiling because this is their family's legacy. When these people are gone and no more, these photos will be heirlooms for them to remember the story of their generation. 
It's fun and helpful to see all the behind the scenes, how I got the shot, what my lens choices were, settings, all that's great, but we have to remember why we do this. Ultimately, it's to serve our clients and to give them the best possible experience on their day, the one that means so much to them, even if it's one of a million for you as the photographer. It's unique to them and it deserves your deepest care and attention. So there's part two. Hope it was inspirational, motivational, and educational. <laughs> if you enjoyed it, please give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel. Through this series, I want to take the time to let you know that I have started a Patreon, an account where you can get more exclusive, in-depth educational content like this. For only right now, $10 a month, you could sign up to become a patron. And hopefully when all this crazy stuff in 2020 dies down, I'll be doing way more long form, in-depth, behind the scenes tutorials and all sorts of other educational stuff based on photography and filmmaking in the wedding scene. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. I'll link it in the description. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Very excited to get part three of this series out to you. And I hope you're doing well in this trying time. Don't forget to keep leaning into what makes you different and I'll catch you in that next one. Later, guys. Peace goes over here. I have a monitor so close to my face.